So I've had the Google Pixel 6 for the last few months and it's actually been my Android device of choice even though I have a ton of other flagship contenders that I can easily use. So let's go ahead and see why the Pixel 6 has been my absolute favorite Android smartphone over the last few months. Okay, now before we get into it, I just wanna quickly go over its specs real quick again, in case this is the first time you're watching a Pixel 6 video, then welcome. Uh, so basically the Pixel 6 is rocking, of course, Google's first ever SOC on a smartphone called Google Tensor. It also packs eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs or 256 gigs of storage, a 50 megapixel wide camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, as well as a 6.4 inch full HD plus OLED display that just looks really beautiful. Keep in mind that this smaller version doesn't have the LTPO panel that the Pro has, but that's not really that important to me. And I don't really think you'll really notice a difference in real world usage. Now, if you've been a subscriber for a while, you may have seen my 6 Pro review. And if you actually haven't, I'll make sure to leave that link down below. But basically the 6 Pro packs a bigger display and it's curve. The smaller flat display on the 6, in my opinion, is perfect. I really don't understand the appeal to curved displays other than the fact that it looks good from a product perspective. But in theory, when you're actually using the phone, it's not that great. It often feels too slippery. So I gotta applaud Google here for giving us a flat display on the non-pro version. And I think you'll enjoy it more than the one on the pro. Now, instead of 120 Hertz refresh rate like the pro, the regular six features a 90 Hertz panel, which still feels buttery smooth and doesn't really drain the battery as much. And speaking of the battery, after a few months of using the Pixel 6, on average, I get about five and a half hours of screen on time, which is good enough for me. And even if I did need to charge it up, it features fast charging up to 30 watts. And like most phones that I've used on a regular basis, I'd often use wireless charging before heading to bed. Now there are occasions where I'd have to be on my phone all day and I'll definitely get less than stellar battery life, but it really just depends on how often you're on your phone and what you're doing. Now, if you have been following the Pixel 6 news cycle, you may have seen article headlines like these popping up over the last few months. And yeah, early on the Pixel 6 did have some issues like drop calls or having the phone kick me out of my own Wi-Fi network and using my cell network for data instead. And after the latest March update, I haven't really noticed anything wrong with the phone anymore. My Wi-Fi connection has been pretty stable, Bluetooth doesn't turn off or disconnect anymore, and I could even make phone calls without it dropping randomly. There was even a magic eraser bug that would crash Google Photos, but that's been fixed too. And that was more of an app compatibility issue on Google's end, so it's not really on the phone. But in terms of software updates though, Google promised Pixel 6 and 6 Pro users five years of security patches up to 2026 and three years of Android OS updates up to 2024, which honestly isn't terrible. Although if you look on the other side of the grass with iOS, Apple with its latest iOS 15 software supports the iPhone 6S, which came out in 2015. It's now 2022, so a phone from seven years ago still got a major software update, which is pretty impressive. Now, before we move on to the camera, which is my favorite portion of any smartphone reviews, I just wanna quickly thank our sponsor dbrand for sponsoring a portion of this video. I don't think I have to say too much about dbrand since they've been sponsoring this channel for a while, but dbrand makes the best and most precise skins for your tech products. Check out this full grain leather on my Pixel 6. This isn't fake leather, this is legit full grain leather that's soft to the touch and smells really good too. They offer three different colors to choose from. I went with a tan, which in my opinion is the best color for anything leather goods. So if you wanna get one for your own Pixel 6, make sure to check out the first link down below or go to dbrand.com slash heymarkel. Okay, so let's talk about the camera on the Pixel 6. Now, I've used the 6 Pro's camera and was really impressed with it, but the Pixel 6 doesn't have a dedicated telephoto lens, which is my go-to focal length whenever I'm on my phone and I use it as my camera. Now, this only packs a wide and ultra-wide camera, and that's okay. For most people, you don't really need all three, but to get into the topic of camera quality, I've always loved how Pixel phones have processed their photos compared to other Android smartphones. Now, the overall photo quality on the Pixel 6 hasn't really changed much from previous Pixel smartphones. It still shoots, in my opinion, the best photos from any smartphone. The shots are clear, not overly saturated, and the colors look super accurate, which I'm sure you'll appreciate as well. The HDR processing is a lot better, which balances out your images a lot more. There's less highlights being blown out, and there are more details in the shadows, which is nice. 
Low light or nighttime photography looks incredible as well. I personally feel like there's less noise on the new Pixel 6 versus previous Pixel phones and the colors are actually more true to life as well. Now, when it comes to video quality though, I don't think there's an Android smartphone out there that can compete with iPhone's video quality. Now, don't get me wrong, the Pixel 6 can still shoot good videos and you can tell that the autofocus doesn't hunt as much in less ideal lighting, the natural bokeh out of the phone is incredible, and the over-sharpened look from most Android smartphones from the past few years have been turned down quite a bit too, so it doesn't look too over-processed when you watch it on a bigger screen. All in all, it's good, but like I said, I don't think there's a smartphone that can really compete with Apple's iPhone when it comes to video quality. Now, before we wrap up the video, I just wanna quickly touch up on Google Tensor and the phone's performance over the last few months. Uh, the Pixel 6 isn't a gaming phone, so don't expect it to score really high on benchmarks or anything like that. But after using this phone for a few months, I honestly haven't noticed any major slowdowns or drop frames when I'm using the phone. Whether I'm gaming or just quickly switching between apps, it's all pretty smooth. Now, if you play something like Genshin Impact, for example, which is a high intensive game, you're not gonna get 60 frames per seconds on this phone. I don't think there's a phone out there, at least to my knowledge, that can run Genshin at 60 frames per seconds. Now, before anyone comments about the phone overheating, I personally haven't had any issues with that. The phone will get hot if I'm playing for a while, but that's normal and that happens to almost every other phone that I use. Anyways, that's gonna do it for me and this video. I hope you all enjoyed this revisited video on the Pixel 6. If you did wanna watch my Pixel 6 Pro review, the link is down below or check out the iCard and make sure to stay subscribed to see more videos like this from me. I do have more flagship reviews coming soon. So yeah, stay subscribed, leave a comment down below and yeah, I'll see you all in the next one.